All right, my friends, welcome. This is a walkthrough of one of a couple different line follow programs we'll explore. I call this one line follow number one because it's a, a relatively simple program that works very well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're in our basic Lego Mindstorms Education AV3 classroom. This is where we always default with this block here. We're actually going to go ahead and just get rid of this. We're going to head over here to events. And as opposed to having when the program starts, with these line follow programs, I like to have it where I trigger it when I'm ready in case I need to set up or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to these blocks here. And when we see this, we've got lots of different opportunities to engage our robot. And we're just going to use this block right here when the center button's pressed. And actually, I'm going to change this to the up button. Um, you can make it whatever. Or if you just like it to start at the beginning, feel free to do that. What we want to do here also is we want to set the movement speed and we're just going to keep it that default of 50% uh, to begin. And now what we want to do is we need to write some code where a robot is going to make a decision whether it sees dark or light. And so the way we do that is we're going to go here to our control blocks and in here we have our repeats, we have forever, repeat until, repeat for X number of times. What I like to use here is this repeat until. And so what I'm going to do is drag this over and I'm actually gonna drop down here to our sensors and we're just going to use uh, when the, the button is pressed, the center button on the brick. So as we go through here, I'm gonna scroll down, I think it's down here towards the bottom. You see we have a lot of options here, don't we? And here we go. And I'm actually going to put this right in here and I'm going to use the center button for this one. And when that happens, when I press the center button, I want the program to stop. I want, and it's going to do that by this, it's going to kick out of this loop here that we haven't filled in yet. So the way we do that, I'm just going to go up here to our movement blocks and I'm just going to drag a stop moving. So whenever I press the center button on my intelligent hub, the, the brick, it's going to kick out of whatever I put in here and it's just going to stop the robot from moving. Now, the question is, well, what goes in here? So what we need to do is go back down here to control and we need some if blocks. And we're gonna use this one here, this if then. And what we wanna do is we wanna set this in a way that the light sensor is going to make a decision. So we're gonna to go to our sensors. We're gonna find our light sensor blocks and they're right here. We're gonna be using reflected light intensity. If you want to sample with color, you could do that as well, of black and white, that would be perfectly fine. But I like reflected light intensity because it's much more accurate and you can be um, a little more in depth down the road as we start to expand some of our coding uh, knowledge and skills. So it defaults here as our sensor, light sensor re and reflected light intensity is less than 50%. So let's, let's figure that out. So if it's less than 50%, that's going to be dark, right? That's going to be our black tape. And we're going to go here to our movement and we want to start moving. Now there's a couple ways to do your moving. All right. And you can do this in a variety of ways. You can see here we could adjust the speed of each individual motor down here with, with this block if we wanted to. But what I want to do is just use this start moving block to begin for a simple code. Now, if we see black, we could have it go straight, but we know sometimes our lines aren't always that straight. So we want to veer this over and let's just try uh, 35 here. We're going to go 35 degrees, which is to the right. You can manually type that in or you can just move this dial to get the angle that you want. So if it sees black, I want it to start to move to the right um, in order for the robot to continue to follow the line. And then what we're actually going to do is I could right click it. I'm going to duplicate this block and I'm going to slide it right in underneath. So if it's less than 50% sees black, we're going to move to the right. This one now, let's change this. If it's greater than 50%, that means it's seeing a, a brighter color. We want to move to the left. So I can swing this dial here. I want to make this pretty accurate. So I'm going to make this 35 as well. 
and now we have that block. And this is just going to continue to do this until I press the center button. Sees black to the right, 35 degree turn. Sees white or a brighter color to the left, 35 degrees. So let's go ahead and download this to our, our robot and let's see what happens. And so it's also important at this point, you're probably going to want to name this program. So I'm just gonna call this line follow one demo. I'm gonna hit save. That way on your brick, your code is more organized. You can find what you need in case you need to go back and tweak. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this to this brick and then let's check out how this robot works on the course that I've made. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run our robot here. We are at 50% speed, um, light intensity threshold at 50%, the default, moving to the right 35 degrees on less than 50, moving to the left if greater than 50, and we'll see what this does here. I want you to think about what do you think is gonna happen before I even run it, or if you've already sampled your code, maybe you've already thought about this, and so um, let's go ahead and run this. So. When I go to run this, nothing will start until I press the up button. Oh no. Not successful, is it? So what do you think is causing this to be a problem? So the problem here is a couple things. Maybe our speed maybe our, our turn degrees, um, and maybe our reflected light intensity threshold. So the key here is not to change a bunch of things. We're gonna change one variable at a time. So here's what we're gonna do. I noticed that the robot was moving way off course. It was not able to identify the black and the white very well. So that tells me that our reflected light intensity threshold is off. This is also a very common mistake for teams and students where they do this work. So let's figure out how we can easily make this happen. All right, so let me go ahead and get to my camera um, adjusted here. All right, so what we have to be able to figure out here, if we look at this course, we gotta figure out with the lighting of the room, the ambiance really, what our robot detects, our color sensor, when it sees black, when it sees a, this wider tape, and more importantly, what it sees when it sits right here in between. So the new coding platform does make this a lot easier. So what I'm actually going to do here, I know it's hard to see, I'm gonna go over to these, this two by three grid of those six little circles, and I'm gonna go in the port view. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down, I can see up here are my motors, down here are my sensors, and I can see that my color sensor here, all right, um, is right here and it's set to reflection. If I press this middle button, I can change it from reflected light to ambient light to color and I want reflected light. So let's, let's take a look here. If I go and set my sensor right here on the black, all right, and I look at my screen, I can see that it's reading 2%. Now, if I move this over to the white tape, I take a look at that and I'm at 52%. Now your numbers might be different just based on the lighting of the room, the brightness of your tape, that sort of thing. But I'm seeing a threshold here of two to 52. Now in the old program, we would teach students to add those numbers together and divide by two. So we'd have 54. And then that number divided by two then would be our threshold right there in the middle. So it would be 27 and we would go back and then change that to 27. But we can do something even a little bit easier. If you take your color sensor, I'm gonna turn this around, and you place it kind of right halfway between half black, half white, we're gonna get a threshold reading. Now I know this is upside down, but this is showing 22, which is pretty accurate to our 27. I mean, if I were to adjust this, just a little nudge here to the right or left, that number is gonna go up. So we might have to go back and fine tune this a little bit, but I'm gonna stick with that 22 reading. I might just round down and make it 20. All right, so we're gonna now go back to our code and we're going to adjust just that one variable to see how that plays out. So let's do that now. Okay, so we did that threshold reading. I'm gonna make it 20. I'm gonna download this program and then we're gonna run it again. Remember the key is to only change one variable at a time. Don't change more than one. 
We all think we know all the things because we want to rush through and be done. And this is a huge problem. When I had my robotics teams spending a great deal of time isolating the errors and only changing one thing at a time and then keeping a log of what we've done in case we needed to go back and reboot. So not losing sight of where we started. So I'm going to go ahead and start this program now. All right, and let's see what our robot does. So we're still getting a little off on our readings here. See that? So we might have to make some adjustments here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. All right, I'm going to go back to port view now. And I'm just going to try this again. So we are looking here at, this is showing me 30. And now what I need to do is I just need to go along this track and kind of see what it's going to provide me in terms of this light threshold. This is shown here. Uh, this shows 8. 8. 21. All right, if I go over here. 17, 7, 25. Okay, so what we need to do now is, again, further isolate. We now have changed that threshold to 22 because we just did one spot, but we didn't take into account how the lighting might affect all the way around. So I saw the lowest kind of threshold at 7, so I'm going to go ahead and just make that 8, and let's go ahead and do that now. So let's change this here to... 8, and I bet we'll have a much more accurate reading now, so we'll go ahead and down. All right, so still not very good. All right, my friends, so I'm kind of walking you through this process here, and hope, hopefully you caught it earlier and going, oh my gosh, Come on, guy, let's go. Let's do this, right? So we changed this to 8%, but what we failed to do is change this variable threshold as well. So we still have this sitting at 50%. So we've got, you know, 42% gap here of leeway. Um, and that's why I had the robot spinning so far out, because we had to find a piece of tape or reflection that showed higher than 50. So we want to make sure that we make that 8 and 8. We want to do both as we see here. So now when we run this, we are going to have success. So again, I'm just kind of modeling some of these typical errors that I, would, I see time and time again when working with students and my former First Lego League teams and working in a, in a middle school for many years. Um, so now let's go ahead and download and run this, and then we are going to have success. So here we go. We're going to have success this time, I promise you. Woo! Boy, that is smooth operator. So you can see how it's just going to sit right on that line. All right, so we could go through here now. And in the next video, if you want to explore some more, because now we've got this working, it's working pretty nice, we could then go back and expand and take a look at how we could just change some other variables, increasing our speed. Uh, we could in increase or decrease the amount of turn and just kind of see what that's going to do with our robot. But this right here is looking really, really sharp. So um, this one's pretty locked in. So this is a very simple coding program with your Lego EV3 software. The only thing that maybe we want to change is how it kind of loses sight of the tape there a little bit on some of these sharp corners. You'll probably see it here on this one. Right there as it kind of spins out. Like how do we go to make that a little smoother? So um, here it is. Line follow program number one that I just call simple. All right, my friends, I can't wait to see what you create and come up with. As always, stay awesome. Peace.